website is your real estate on the digital realm. Take care of it and take care of it with your best effort and intent. Hi guys, it's Charlie, your online business manager and business coach. My goal is to assist small business owners to build their businesses with a focus on using the internet and online technologies in an appropriate and cost-effective manner. People hire me to take the stress out of managing their businesses and allow themselves to focus on what they do best. Today, my guest is Tiziano, and I hope I got that right. I know I asked him before we started how he pronounced his name. I'm an Australian. We mangle everything. <laughs> and we're going to have a chat about SEO and uh, what, what, what the effects on businesses are today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad to have you as a guest. If I could get you, please, just to give us a bit of an overview of who you are. Thanks for having me, Charlie. And um, I'm I'm Tiziano Sgarbi, and um, I have a SEO agency in Italy, and we work um, worldwide. I would say with different kinds of clients and niches uh, with SEO. We do SEO 360 in all all of it, its uh, corners and angles and uh, subtleties. Um, and more and more has been. Oh well, probably we will get to talk about that. SEO is turning into something more. Less IT, more marketing, pure marketing. So a lot of content and uh, AI, which is a very hot topic nowadays. And that's what we do every day. Fantastic. So Italy, and I do, again, I'm going to say thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. It is 8 a.m. my time and 11 p.m. for Tiziano. So guys, this is a really big thing for us. I'm always grateful when my guests uh, carve out the, this time for me. So thank you again. So let's have a chat about SEO. I um, have been doing this business since 2007. I got into SEO because you have to. If you're building websites for people, if you're doing work for people, you need to know a bit about SEO. So I got into SEO back then. And I'm looking at how it has gone today with all the changes and all the algorithm changes and with this thing called AI coming in. And looking at how different it is to how it was not even a year ago or two years ago but back mm -hmm. to 10 years ago how different it is so let's have a chat about that and let's talk about the things that you're seeing today with seo that businesses need to think about and mm -hmm. uh where that where they might be where they really need to up thinking is where i want to kind of get to is where, where we do where do we need to update our thinking based on all the new algorithms and how worried do we need to be about some of these things that we're seeing at the moment? Mm, right. I think <clears throat> if there is one key word, no pun intended here, it's um, do things for your audience. You know, um, think, put yourself on your audience shoes and reason what makes sense for them. Uh, what would you like if you were the reader or the, the buyer or the who, who is doing the search? What are you looking for? And what is important for you? What resonates with you? Uh, that seems very naive, but um, I would say a reasonable part of websites, they're just trying to automate things and scale um, and they shortcut a lot of that. And 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 human beings can, can, can realize that, you know? Um, so I think I need, website owner or business owner should be thinking uh, what my audience is really wanting, what they are looking for, and try to be as unique as you possibly can according to your sales proposition and, and reflect that on your website. It's as simple as that. <laughs> so I've just heard you say this is something we have been telling our clients and it, like every person I've spoken to mm -hmm. time immemorial this is basically the message that we've been trying to get through to people is mm -hmm. write for your audience know who your audience is and be human about it is that mm -hmm. a good summary of it um well a google answer now would could be it depends no I'm not saying that um <laughs> it's um <laughs> I think if we look back to SEO um like I don't know 15 20 25 25 maybe not but years it's an SEO is a, 
a big crossroad of many different things. Maybe the only really typical thing from SEO is like links, backlinks and link building uh, that just SEOs could handle. Um, and it's getting more and more, I would say SEO is becoming uh, more of marketing and less of IT, I would say like that. Um, because especially if, when it comes to Google search engines in general, they are getting a better understanding of content, of structure, of code, of text, of images, videos. So the things we can, I mean, there are, there are a lot of things we need to do on the IT side of SEO, um, that uh, most people don't see when they are interacting with a website. But those are less and less relevant to the overall result, I would say. They are necessary, but they are less relevant. And the message we put out is more and more important, I guess. And um, even, even now we can see it's a, a kind of a far west what we are going through right now on search results worldwide. Um, small very small new websites like getting incredible rankings or at this what's more often than not uh, very consolidated websites they have like uh, trust uh, across time they are uh, holding positions so the message is there it's not like it maybe h1 that is missing or i don't know um some structured data whatever technical issue it's more about the message you know um and we had for maybe probably the first big leak of Google this year. And one of the things that got confirmed, um, if, if it was a leak, but even if it wasn't, um, it was a desired leak, we knew uh, like Google needed to measure the interactions of users with the websites and to see this as quality uh, quality metrics. And now we know the nav boost was there. And like, they were re really with Chrome, essentially, like they were tracking what every user was doing in every website, like how long, how many, the engagement. So this is quality. This is the message, um, we are, uh, we are delivering to people. And it's, again, it's less about a H tag or, um, some, uh, formal element that for God's sake should be taken care of, but the message for the people. Okay, so I, I just want to sort of clarify a couple of things there for, yeah. for my audience. Um, you, you're talking about the IT component of SEO versus the message component. When we talk about the IT component, guys, what we're talking about is how you structure your pages, making sure, um, as Tiziana mm -hmm. said, yeah, that you've got a you've got your heading tags set up. You've got a H1 tag on the page, and then you've got H2 and H3 page um, tags. So heading tags that structure your content and drive people through your content the way it should be done. It's about using your keywords uh, and making sure you've got your keywords set and your meta title and your meta description. That's all the technical side of things. And that's the sort of things that when we set up websites for people that we do as standard now. And if you're not, if it's not being done as standard, it, it damn well should be because it's so routine. Then we come to the message side of it. And um, I'm going to get you to weigh in on this one. The message side of it is about what is it that you, your services or your products do to solve a person's product problem? How do they do that? What do they do? How, why do they want to deal with you? It's no, I don't want to go on too long because I really want to get your point on it. But people tend to, when they, they do a product page or they do a sales page, they talk about how wonderful their product is why their product is so good and it's got all these features and it's got all these benefits and it's oh it's great and you've got this roi on it and what they forget to answer is how it solves the problem it doesn't actually connect the problem that a client has with what the feature and benefit that your product or service does to fix it you want to talk about that a little bit yeah and and this is a, a more a marketing thing than seo uh centrical i would say like top issue and that's correct i mean when you put content out there and and we optimize for that and we we need to do that for sure uh, more than ever um what's more most important is uh, 
what as you are saying the problem we are solving and how we are solving what makes our solution solution unique for for that particular problem for that particular user and to make that unique and um, and i i would just skip forward now a little bit but i would say most of times the ai can do that for us because how what makes you unique what are your strengths uh, you know the the, the 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 real solutions you're delivering you can phrase that in so many ways but in a very compelling and unique way just humans can do and um so that is up to us to craft in 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 what we create and put out uh and make our best i mean and there's no recipe for that we should iterate and and see the results and but people can relate to that and for sure the results would be better also in seo uh realm yeah, so, and that then comes back to, you were talking about uh, Google measuring the amount of time people spend and then how they interact and how how long they spend on a site. It's getting that message. It's getting the way you present that message to people that actually then drive those results. If you can't connect with a visitor on your site early, they're not going to stick around. And that's then going to have that, on flow effect of well this can't be a very good site because they didn't stick around is that a good way of putting that um yeah uh yes i would say so it is even though uh i, I i'm just it's blinking on my mind now like if we think about this snippet results uh we still have and now with aio uh, a lot of that is happening like we get we type anything on the on, on, on Google and then we have the result right away, you know, that kind of answer. And so for what we are talking now, that is not the case, of course, because they might even not click in your page. But let's say for most cases, when depth, some sort of depth and in different phases of the funnel is needed, um, we need to cover uh, our topic with uh, uniqueness, with quality. And uh, Google wants to, of course, to provide the best answers because their business model is based on that, uh, on search marketing. And uh, so they are always looking to refine what's the best answer for us to surface here. So it's also in, in Google's best interest to, to look for that quality. To that. And, and one of the things is measure, of course, as we mentioned, uh, is how users are interacting with the website, how much time they're spending in a page, which kind of click they are having. They are having uh, difficulties with the page, for example, very like code things, like they click and it doesn't happen. For example, like let's say it's, there's an FAQ page, it's, there's an accordion, they click, it doesn't open, that kind of thing. A JavaScript maybe is not working. That is all being measured and this is quality and, and Google is looking at that. Uh, so they, of course they want they 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 reach their dominant position they have now because they always look at that to some some in some way and they continue to refine that so they are looking for those evidences also to 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 speak which results they are showing yeah look and you just actually hit a, a really interesting point for me that you spoke about aio which i'm assuming is artificial intelligence optimization and uh, you you actually mentioned it where they summarize results from multiple different pages right at the top of the search results so they people don't have to click through they can get the answer straight away and, and move on how is that affecting businesses how is that well it's got to be a, lots of thoughts have just come up on that one it must be affecting their search marketing business google search marketing business because people aren't spending as long in the search engines because it's all at the top now and they can get their answer and move but how does that then affect businesses and all of these metrics that we just talk, spoke about, about, you know, keeping them on the site, engaging them, getting the information? What do we need to think about there? Um, okay, there's a, a lot to unpack here. Let, let's see. Um, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, so uh, two things, uh, AIO, that is a, a, a Google thing. It's um, what Google is doing with generative AI. Uh, and so it's called uh, AI overview. So when we type, overview, and okay. by the way, this, being, this, this has been rolled out worldwide last week, I believe. 
like in a hundred plus languages. It was just in English up to up to then. And so we type a, a query at Google and we won't see the typical 10 blue links. We and we will see a lot of boxes and informations and that will change as we interact uh, with those informations. We can click, we can move and, and so on. And we can refine our, 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 our query. Um, this is one thing and it's based on generative AI. And uh, as you ask it, uh, AI, is another thing that can be, it's more pervasive, I would say. It can go even to open AI, chat GPT thing. It can go to, to other um, tools that are emerging very quickly right now. And there's a new discipline inside SEO, which is the GEO, uh, Generative AI Engine Optimization. Um, so essentially uh, for a listener, uh, we need to start optimizing for chat GPT. How do we do that? Is it still like very early times we are learning, we are testing. Um, so, and to answer also your question now, um, we don't have metrics for all of those. This is so new, like AIO is, uh, has weeks. So we, we still don't know, we still don't, we still can measure the impact. I mean, website owners that have been impacted, they can see uh on in, in 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 their google analytics or um even to search console metrics better analytics in this case and and to see um for sure there will be some significant impact for most websites in short term uh, because it's changing the way uh, we interact with uh, with the results essentially and another a very important sign we had in the last few weeks is uh, Google releasing uh, Google Ads for AIO. Because if we think uh, we kind of reverse engineer, uh, Google needs to get uh, to develop, to refine their approach to, to search on uh, AI perspective. But at the same time, uh, the threat is if we don't do we might simply be disrupted by like a business model, uh, like very roughly saying people can relate to chat GPT nowadays. So people start searching and we have search GPT now is still closed, but, but it's getting more users very fast. They might use that and on Google, what Google did to Yahoo a long time ago. And at the same time, Google business model is depending on the search engine to sell advertisement. So uh, how do we get rid of that? Uh, we can't. Um, so they are doing, of course, they are uh, doing their best uh, to find a ways. And the release, releasing um, of advertisement in these AIOs, uh, it's a sign. It's where they're really looking to go. And uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, so what I'm hearing here is, no. sorry, go on, go on, go on. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying to close the, the, my reasoning to answer your question, uh, which kind of optimization, which kind of things we should do on our websites. Essentially, they are the same uh, as before. And uh, we will learn because this is so new and there are no books, there are no courses. Like there's, uh, it's very practical. We need to, 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 to see, for example, is AI adopting like the passages update like we had a year ago or so, a bit more uh, on Google. So are they using that kind of technique to surface results in AIOs? So let's do more of that to get more uh, exposition for our clients. Uh, we need to observe like here, what's what will happen and, uh, and adapt. But all that said, uh, optimizing for AI is a reality now. Okay, look, thank you so much. I am actually going to say this is, reminds me of the early days of search engine optimization where no one knew what we were doing. We were doing our absolute best to be able to get sites listed. First of all, getting sites listed was the big challenge. That seems right. to be now uh, pretty much routine. Once you follow a certain set of things, you'll get your site listed in the search engines, not a problem. But getting them listed, first of all, was an issue. Then it was getting them ranking and no one really knew. And I don't think that anyone has ever really known what the Google algorithm has been at any one point in time. 
because it got gamed so hard in the early days right. that Google went, we're not telling anyone anything. So we've, we've always been, it, it feels like we're always one step behind. I think at the moment that we're probably feeling a little bit more than one step behind. And the re- and I think part of the reason for that is, is that because Google itself and the search engines themselves don't quite know what they're doing either and they're learning. So while they're learning, we're learning and it's a bit of a mess. But what I did take from everything you said there, content is king. We've said it for years. Content is absolutely king. And keep writing for your target audience. Keep writing good content. Don't rely on chat GPT or an AI to write your content and think it's going to be good. If you do use an AI to write your content, which I would absolutely recommend, get an AI in to start to get your content together then go through and refine it for yourself. Read it mm-hmm. aloud. See what it does. Test it. Yeah. Do all of those things. Yeah, that's right, Charlie. Um, I, I'm I'm not against at all uh, AI, and I think we all should use it. And the thing is, how can you use it um, in, a, in a positive way? Because if we think, let's go that way how AI models are trained with the existing data. So they get what already exists and it's a machine. So it consumes very fast, read, 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 read. Now you write about that. So it's more of the same, more of the same always. And if we want to be unique, if you want to be uh, valuable for our readers, for our users, we need to create something unique. So, and no chat GPT and no tool will be ever created that can tell about this diversity we are because that's just the way we are and so we need to like humans need to assess that inside our organizations or businesses what do we do differently and put that on 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 content and of course ai can help in in different stages in different points but like it's not the the one-stop shop you can just get a piece of content out of the blue it doesn't i mean it works but it's not effective it's simply like that and you mentioned something that it's a, it's it's um, it's true, and it's not at the same time. Content is king. It is, but content is, the kind of content that you just prompt uh, ChatGPT through API to do like I don't ten ten thousand new articles and publish overnight. This is not content is king. So no. it is, but I mean, which kind of content? Um, so unique content, quality content, which is a, a, a tough um, concept quality, but quality content really is king. And that's the where we make the difference. I, I like that. And thank you. Thank you so much for correcting me so, so politely and so nicely. <laughs> you are entirely correct. And, you know, I remember, I mean, it shows my, it does show my, I said, I've, I've been doing this since 2007, but do you remember the content spinners that we used to be able to buy and you'd put in your keywords and it would just spin content up for you and you'd copy and paste the articles into your blogs? Do you remember those tools? Uh, there was so much. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and SEOs are responsible for that <laughs> because most of times we are, we are trying to, we are trying always to game the system to understand how it works so we can apply that for our clients. The thing is a very thin line where, where that uh, is like uh, playing a fair game or you are really uh, gaming the system. Uh, and, 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 and at this point, search engines, they got really good with a lot of things. So we, as you mentioned, an example, uh, if you just think about PBNs, uh, like doing uh, link, getting links from from ourselves for our websites, this doesn't work like for years now. It's a strategy so many people used, and and um, th- that's what I, I also I mentioned at the beginning. It's just SEO is getting more and more about marketing and a bit less uh, about uh, IT. So it's about the things people can see on on a website. This is more than ever what matters. Awesome. Okay. I was just trying to think, oh, you were talking about backlinks there. Uh, So there are still SEOs out there who use backlinking strategies. And I've had a couple of my clients come to me quite distraught 
because their rankings have just tanked and all they have coming into their uh, contact forms is spam contacts because they've gone to, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in inverted commas, an agency or an SEO. He said, mm -hmm. yes, 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 I can get you leads. And they've just gone out and done backlinking, a backlinking strategy. Can you talk a little bit about why that's not working anymore? Um, Google got, I mean, I'm, I'm saying Google because it's the main uh, search engine, but uh, search engines, they got really good especially Google at spotting uh, man manipulative uh, backlinks. So it's so a backlink also, I think maybe we need to explain what it is. A backlink is uh, a hyperlink. So from a page A to a page B. And so let's say you're reading a recipe um, in a page, in a web page, and that recipe, they mention an ingredient. And they send, they put this word, I don't know, it could be um, cinnamon. And the cinnamon, there's you click over and you are sent to a cinnamon maker. Uh, they 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 sell cinnamon, for example. This is a backlink. Yep. And there are many kinds of bad, backlinks, but that's essentially what it is. Uh, and that for SEO, SEO is still relevant, and it was in the past a lot more relevant. So of course, SEOs manipulated that a lot in all sorts of ways, and they still do. Uh, but the thing is, and to your question, uh, search engines, they got very good to understand the context of uh, backlinks. They need, they, they, they can also co with computational power and, and, and even AI uh, to understand what's going on on that website, which backlinks are coming in and out, uh, which kind of pages. I was just reading um, a few weeks ago, um, it's confirmed now, uh, or this week, actually, um, Google admitted uh, now they are demoting entire uh, directors or um, subdirectories of websites like um, uh, CNN. They were just selling entire parts uh, of, uh, of a subdomain for people to sell shoes or to, 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 to sell travel packages. That's uh, nothing to do with CNN. It's just one case. There are many. So they are demoting because as uh, CNN is a, a big important outlet. So someone, when the, we think about CNN is about news, it's not about selling the best shoes. So now search engines, they can, they can do that. And, and so they can understand what, where the, the backlink is coming from. Uh, is it from a trust? trusted website, which kind of website is, what they do, where is the, the backlink, is on the body of the text, is on the navigational, is on the menu, is um, intermittent one. There are all sorts of signs uh, they can uh, measure and give more or less weight to that backlink. So we just want to be more and more natural in, in that. And link building is, is still important, um, but it's more and more about a digital PR than link building. So to get our, our, our products or brands mentioned by other people, or of course, links are fine as long as they are natural and it's like not buying a uh, hundred monthly uh, links that it worked for pretty good at some point, but it doesn't anymore. Simply like that. Yeah, so I just want to sort of um, highlight, go a little bit further on that. I, I talk to, a, I talk about it being a high quality site, a high quality link versus a low quality link. Mm -hmm. And when people talk about doing link building strategies, your idea, your your example there of CNN, I didn't actually realize CNN was doing that. And one of the reasons that it would have worked initially is that CNN is actually a high trust site with Google for news information mm -hmm. so it has a it has a high reputation score if you like i'm going to use terms here that aren't quite right but they're close enough it's got a high reputation score so someone's got oh this has got a high reputation score so what we'll do is we'll take a subdomain for shoes.cnn.com that's going to take the the reputation from the main site it's going to put it on here so any link from here is going to get a high reputation link back to your site I'm so glad that Google has decided that that's not what it's going to do. But we see that. I see that a lot when I start to look at people's traffic and what they're doing and how they can start to improve their traffic. 
it's coming from low reputation, low quality directory sites. So yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I will just put up an article here. You go and look at the article that's put up and it's such a poorly written article to begin with. It's terrible. And it's appearing on a site. So uh, let's say I've got a travel site that's got this bank backlink to it. The articles on either side of it might be, I don't know, shoes and it might be face cream. So there's no reputation there. There's no nothing that ties it all together. It's just a site that people have been putting up their, their, their links to. Um, so they're, they're your low reputation sites and that's what you've got to watch out for. That's, that's the things you need to watch out for. If you want to do a backlinking strategy, that's fine, but get high quality relevant sites that actually support what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That would be um, a summary of it, I think. That's the way. And um, that's the way I do. And I recommend to everyone to, to do like that. Just be relevant in your niche. And uh, so you want quality backlinks. What does that mean? I would say it's even less relevant, all those SEO metrics. I mean, we do because we do SEO, but I mean, if you are, I don't know, in um, you, you sell furniture or you, you make furniture, I mean, in furniture realm, you know which websites in your area or in your country are relevant, or even overseas maybe in some cases, but you should get links from those. I mean, you, you don't want a backlink from a car maker. I mean, unless you're doing yeah. something together, you know, this is the kind of thing that it doesn't work anymore. And one thing it's important to mention here, there is still, especially the low cost SEO and I mean, they offer keywords in, in, in numbers of keywords, like a hundred keywords or a, a thousand keywords to create content it, it, that never work it as well. Or uh, the same as links, they sell like as a lot of links. So what happened now, Google is not even taking in consideration that until a while ago, maybe three, four years around that, uh, I remember we still did, uh, we disavowed. We, when we got especially a sick website, we need to recover, we disavowed bad links. You know, we, we don't, uh, what, what, what is disavowing for a listener? We just tell Google, I mean, from all this list of web links pointing to my website, I don't want to discard these ones. But now Google is, I mean, we don't do anymore because Google already knows what's crappy and what's not. So what, what will happen is actually you're just getting fooled by poor SEO. You're paying money then to get links for you, but those links don't even harm you anymore. They just don't, they don't work. They are not considered by, by, by search engines. So that's the point where we are right now with that, the state of art. And I think I just want to add on to that. So Google doesn't pay any attention to it. So you've paid this all this money out. You've got all these links to your site. Google, they're not doing anything for you. Google's gone, no, nah, we're not going to pay any attention to those. And all those links are doing is sending garbage traffic to your website. You're getting bots visiting your websites that then goes through and finds all your forms and fills out all your forms and sends you spam saying we can do all this or here's some Viagra or here's some Xanax things. or And, and you, your inbox now is filled with spam email because... <laughs> You've got all this garbage traffic coming to your site. It's not helping. It's not helping you. It's not helping your website. It's not helping your SEO. And you're spending good money after that. You really are. Can we have a chat then? Given that I've just done that rant, can we have a chat then about what you should be looking for in an SEO? If you want to go and work with an SEO and you want someone to come in and help you, what are the sorts of things an SEO, a good SEO will do with a business? What are the sorts of things that people should be asking of their SEOs to find out and make sure that they're getting the right people to help them do what they want to, mm. to, to do this? Um, I would say I probably would do the, the very first question. Um, it's about results. Uh, how fast and 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 how? What's the degree of um, sure? I mean, you can be how how sure can you be? You deliver the results you're promising me, and you ask that for any uh, SEO agency. Serious people would tell it won't be fast. 
and I can't be sure because that's how it goes. We we can predict what what we, more than ever we're talking about AI. What will happen? Which kind of update might we have in a month from now? Um, we don't know with our competitors what they're doing. So I think doing consistent work in SEO and that's what our listener want to to have is doing the basics over and over and optimizing uh, in in the best way and and refining, iterating. That kind of thing should reflect in 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 the proposal um, in the interactions with any SEO agency and. I, I still know some today, not not very rarely, by the way, they promise like I, I'm for sure you get there. Like I remember just to to bridge to what we were talking moments ago. I remember an agency here in Italy, they use they had on their website a uh, hundred percent guaranteed ranking in a month, which is insane, right? Uh so what they did, uh they have <laughs> they did uh they, they they have a very powerful domain uh, connected to an outlet, an Italian outlet, uh, on their area, and they just did the the, the very same CNN uh, strategy. Even when CNN wasn't doing that many years ago, actually they started. So, for example, imagine you have this very powerful domain, and you want to sell um, fabrics. So you create this subdomain with fabrics and you're just ranking very fast. That never quite worked because it was not CNN, first of all. It was a strong domain, but not that strong. So, and but they got some positions, they got traction. Let's say they could move the needle a little bit very fast, but they didn't go further because of course there's no strategy in COVID. So this sort of uh, snake oil, um, you need to pay attention and 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 and, and do more questions, try to understand better. How can you be so sure if things are so volatile nowadays and if AI is so fast, the pace is, of evolution is so fast and uh, other competitors are also moving fast. So this is, I, I would say, a big, 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 big area to explore with any potential um, vendor. Um, another one, of course, if you have proven track record of uh, what you did in the past, you, you can show. Uh, what they did, maybe many agencies they specialize in a in a specific niche, or uh, it could be hotels, or it could be um, logistics, or it could be B two B, or it could be I mean there are so many, and, and so they can show um, evidences of what they did. Um, so that's an, another important thing to ask. I think that is a role yeah. already in the future. I, I think they, they're two very great questions and I was so so pleased to hear you say they should be saying, no, we're not sure and it won't be fast because you can't be. You absolutely can't be. Um, so how then can a business, and I don't know if you can answer this and it's okay if you can't, how can a business then determine the ROI, the return on investment for an SEO engagement what 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 should a business be i think that's the question i want to ask is what should a business be expecting to get out of an seo engagement when they go to uh someone who does this for them uh okay it, it, there are different angles here points of view for for your for for reply i mean the most typical one when we say roi is the re, i mean uh how many how many sales uh, did, did did you have with that uh campaign so we invested this amount of money we did those things and those things produced this outcome which means clicks that became conversions and that is uh, measurable so our our revenue increased by I don't know 30 percent with this 2000 investment it's just an example I created on the get-go that is one in some cases is the ROI is not necessarily uh, attached to a revenue. It could be brand, the brand exposition and, and, and building that a new brand or uh, some new product or service that brand is, is doing. So, and still you can then track by conversion or conversion could be mean 
it could be mean different things for you. It could be um, filling up a, a form. It could be just interacting with a video. It could be um, reading, uh, I mean, uh, maybe a, a long page. I mean, it depends on the case, but most typically it's the revenue. So, and you can measure that. Um, I mean, of course, as long as you have uh, the, the right tools set, which is not a big deal. I mean, Google Analytics can do most of things and the events uh, should be probably set and you can track what's going on on your website. And, and even some CMSs, they provide also tools to 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 see that uh, Shopify does that, Wix uh, does that. There are others that, I mean, and it's very intuitive also to, to see that. Um, so I, I wanna just hit something there that you said, we, we speak about ROI and most of us think about ROI in terms of money. And that, that, mm -hmm. that's, I think is a good way of saying that, you know, we spend so much money, we expect to get so much money in. Then you spoke about brand exposition, and that is really about getting your brand out there, getting the website out there, uh, getting people, get, raising your brand awareness amongst your type of audience. What I really liked what you said there is about being clear of the, on the goal of the campaign that you're running. Uh, when, when I think it's probably, well, from what you're saying there, it's probably a really good idea to agree with your SEO. Well, in this case, we in this time what we want to do is uh increase the number of signups we have to our mailing list so they go here and they fill in this form that is a form of roi that is a form of roi now it's going to be a, a slower roi or it's going to be harder to determine that roi because it's going to be roi over time but it still is a form of roi i also really loved there about you know how long do they spend on a page that could also be a, a a, res um, a goal of a campaign or watching a video could be a goal of a campaign i really love that you could tie that you've, you've brought that right down to some really specific things for us because most of us don't think in those terms so that that's fantastic you also mentioned the tools absolutely using google analytics is or if not google analytics a form of analytics is is absolutely key knowing where people are coming into your site knowing how long they, they're staying on your site where they're from as much of the information as you can get out of out of their their browser traffic. Right. How do you feel about using heat maps and such things like uh, I think it's Microsoft Clarity, is it uh, mm -hmm. that you put on and you can see where people? Get, how do you feel about using those sorts of tools as part of measuring what you're doing here? Uh, I mean, now you're asking me something very personal because I'm a big proponent of clarity and um, understanding people's behavior because when it comes to marketing we want to give people what they're looking for to some extent and even i mean let's go a bit more far they don't know they want but um, so understanding behavior is interesting and uh, and it's it can be very surprising if you start digging uh, in any website in understanding how people are interacting with the website. And so what you just mentioned, the heat maps, you start getting different pages, um, what they are clicking, what they are stopping to read more or a video uh, position here interests more than there. So all, all these kinds of uh, observations are very, very useful uh, and, and powerful, I would say, to optimize our content. Um, I mean, what, now what we are talking about is not essentially SEO anymore. It's like marketing. Um, so how can we serve better people? So what, what, what is interesting then? Maybe we created an amazing uh, 10 lines of text, but no one is actually reading those. So what's wrong? Uh, should we remove? Should we iterate it? Should we put it somewhere? I mean, that's the question. And and there's no recipe here. We need to understand from time to time by looking to what people do on your website. And these heat maps, Microsoft Clarity is my favorite, but there are others. Uh, they can they can provide data to make uh, informed decisions and uh, or data driven decisions as you wish. Uh, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. Yeah, look, thank you so much for answering that. And yes, you're right. It's not exactly SEO. I just feel that it all kind of ties in because really the idea of getting your site ranked 
is about giving your users or your audience what it is they're looking for. And if you don't know what they're looking for, you, what, you, it's good money after bad. <laughs> you really are just pouring money down the drain, which is why I asked that because you were speaking about the goal of, of a campaign. And it's like, well, if we've got a page and we don't know if they're watching the video or we think they're watching the video, our, our data is telling us that, but are they getting to that or is it something else? Are they stopping on something else that's of more interest? That to me is a really, it's all key. It's all part of this whole thing about getting your site ranking and, and being found. I think okay. if, you, if you allow me, Charlie, just one thing. I think a mistake is not a mistake, actually. Uh, iter not iterating, not understanding what is not working is the real mistake. Doing something that didn't work, it's fine. Because in the digital realm, we know very little actually so it's a lot about experimentation and and how i would like i support all our clients uh they should explore we should try new things so i i, I love that again and i know i've said this a lot in this interview you're saying so many really good things here we need to be making mistakes. If we're not making mistakes, we're not learning, we're not improving. So we need to be making those mistakes. The failure is not understanding why those mistakes were mistakes and improving on it and, and right. doing something different and trying something different. So very, very key. Okay, so really what I've got out of here so far is that when, when you're looking to engage with an SEO, you should be asking them how sure you are about getting the results and how fast you're going to get them mm -hmm. and the answer should be no i'm not sure at all <laughs> and not very fast <laughs> those are um, those are two very good signs yeah yeah i i look, honestly that they're great they're great questions and then i think if people were then to go into well how do we measure the results what is it we can do to make sure that we are moving forward that we are actually I'm going to say getting a return on our investment, but not it may not be a monetary gain straight up. It might be something else that you're doing straight up that then leads to a monetary gain over time. I think they're really great questions for people to be asking. Okay. I... I think I've, I've asked all my questions that I wanted to ask. Um, I, I, look, we could go on for hours here because SEO is one of my favourite things and marketing is one of my favourite things and this is tying it all together. Is there something that you wanted to just add into anything we've discussed here? Um, I'm, I, yes. Um, we are in an era where the instant gratification is like it's a, it's it's everywhere. Like it's um, it's ubiquitous, and um, and it, it's hard for everyone actually um, to 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 do something and not have the instant gratification. And in all marketing channels. Um, and, and I do this because I believe in it. We have different market, cha market channels and I think most businesses should be looking to all of them and, 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 and because there are different approaches and, 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 and pros and uh, so we should be doing a bit for everyone, not having all the eggs on the same basket. But SEO has the lion's share on traffic and I think every website owner should be doing at least something uh, regarding SEO because that's where the biggest part of traffic for any website is. And we live in, in a world, especially for the Google's business model where uh, Google ads got such an exposition because it's, it's the instant gratification. But even your leads might cost a lot more and um, and that is, I mean, people don't they, people don't think about that, but that's the, the reality. And um, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be done; it should be done as well. By the way, SEO and advertisement together can can do wonders because one can inform another and can complete another in different in different ways. But SEO is the, the biggest share of traffic, so I would incentivize uh, 
every listener to to think about that and think about you, you, your website what what your website would look like what your business would like if it had a lot of more traffic and it could be i mean in in all the intents of search it could be very targeted to purchase but it could be just getting acquainted to products or services that are different stages of the journey so and we talk about roi we have different purposes also so when we get started what do we want from from seo so i think it's opening um maybe the the eye from to that fact that uh, seo can bring you more traffic than any other channel on the web or even outside the web uh it's amazing I think I did some statistics. Oh, no, I know I did the statistics on it recently, and I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's something like 70% of traffic still comes through your search engines. It, like 70% of traffic for websites still comes through your search engines, which is massive. That, that That's astounding. I also just wanted to add into that because I know I have a lot of people say, oh, we just use social media. We've, yeah, we've got our site on social media. We've got our page. That's our web page now. We're not going to bother about running a web page. We're not going to worry about the search engine traffic. And I think that's a really dangerous strategy for any business to have. When you have a website, you control it. It's your website. You can host it wherever you want. You can put whatever information you want on it within the the bounds of legality i've got to say that and you know some sometimes your hosting provider is going to say no we don't allow that type of content that's okay because there is a hosting provider that will and you pick up your website and you move it to the new hosting provider if you are on a a, a social media network and that is what your strategy is and and they come out and say we do not allow this content anymore or we are changing our process so that we are de-ranking all of these sites and all of the traffic to here you're screwed <laughs> you are absolutely screwed because you've just lost all of that traffic whereas if you are using your social media networks to drive traffic back into your websites and building your lists and your contacts through there if something goes wrong in over here, you've still got your website in the middle. If something goes wrong over here, you've still got your website in the middle. And that's where search engine marketing and search engine optimization also comes into it. So I yeah, thank you for raising it. I think it's a really important point to remember. Yeah. Now, um, can you please I, tell us? Oh, sorry, go on. Yep. Yeah, can I say just one more thing? I, I was listening to you. In some countries, even allowed it, uh, you can put in your balance sheet uh, the estimation of value of your website, and it can be a lot in some cases. So, like, it's an asset. Good point. Absolutely. Uh, now, what is that? Goodwill. It would yeah. be, um, in, in our country, it would be uh, goodwill, basically, the goodwill associated with the business. And your website would fill part of that goodwill. Absolutely. It's a massive asset for you. Yeah. Can you tell us where people can find you and the sort of things that you do when you work with people, um, or do you work with people? Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? When I work with people, um, okay. <clears throat> um, we have clients worldwide, essentially, and most 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 a lot of yeah a lot of countries i would say at this point and uh it's all digital so we are uh digital also uh, seo agency so we are connected uh, people are, are copies or uh, assistants or technical people um and we serve clients on the same way so our interactions are pretty much digital even before the pandemics nowadays it's so often for in so many businesses we do like that but we used to do this even before uh, the pandemics and of course uh, some clients um, are closed or they require visiting so as I love interacting face to face and I, I still think it's the most fulfilling way to interact with people like really even like with my cell phone uh, turn it off my computer that's looking in the eye and discussing ideas um, I I'm known to use pencil and paper in meetings, and I, I draw and I, and I write a lot. So that's kind of my way of interacting with people and being, being very present. 
Um, I'm working right now, I wanted to mention in an experiment in a newsletter about uh, SEO, but like we talked about, uh, it's a very, very summarized uh, newsletter about SEO and content and AI, it's everything around SEO. We have all our inboxes cluttered, so it's something to be very, very fast to read, minimalist, and uh, so far I did a, a few editions. Um, every few weeks so and uh, you can register in my website uh, sgarbi.eu so it's sgarbi.eu and you have the newsletter there you can just type in and be glad Fabulous. to send you the next one excellent i will make sure i put that on uh this the the show notes and i'm assuming that's where people can find you as well if they want to work with you or find out about working with you that's right that is awesome that's fantastic. I will probably be in touch about a couple of my clients after we're done here. <laughs> Glad to. So while we do our wrap up, what is the one thing you want people to take away from our conversation today? Um, SEO can do a lot for any business or any organization, even if it's not nonprofit. And it has the biggest share of traffic. And your website is your real estate on the digital realm. Take care of it and take care of it with your best effort and intent. So craft your content with all possible quality you can put on and uh, update um, keep iterating keep understanding your your um, audience and that for sure will bring more and more results such a good thing to take away thank you so much guys i hope you have had a fantastic time with this talk i i know i have i know i've got a lot out of it um I, I i keep saying i love seo it's one of the things that i got hooked into early on uh i've dabbled in it and i love talking to people that really know it because it is an art in and of itself if you could remember to like the video subscribe to the channel ring the notification bell so you find out when we drop more content i would absolutely appreciate that and please if you want to ask questions come across to our locals community ask charlieleatham.locals.com and join the conversation there tiziano thank you so much for your time today thank you or this, this evening thank you so much for being up so late for me i do appreciate it uh, and uh, if you've got no, do you have anything else you wanted to say before we sign off today? Um, I think we all have the possibility to to improve our our websites and content. And it's there's a lot of uh, uh -huh things that nowadays of AI is taking over. It's not. There's a lot of um, very dangerous, I think, promises, and they're. I mean, they are trying to create selling something that for a value it has not. Of course, it's advancing very fast and it's good actually, but it's, I think a lot of this uh, skeptic, um, not a skepticism actually uh, of this um, daunting idea that we won't have our jobs anymore and everything will be done AI. It's not that, like that. So it's in your hands to 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 have your digital business, your website, and, and even more than that, and to work with that. So think about that. Thank you so much. Guys, I will see you all well, tomorrow with my daily inspirations, and hopefully next week we will have another interview as well. See you later, guys. Bye.